Hi, this is Janos and uh, I'm going to talk about transformers. <laughs> Let's follow up on our single-ended transformers. And Collecting Retro has shared something really interesting. And uh, uh, and let's let's dive into it. I've had great results with moderate size transformers that achieve about 500 per 1k. And now I'm doing a flashback to my previous video, like, where I recommended for best results use 10 Henry per k. However, you will notice that that is really far fetched, and you are not going to get 10 Henry per k in a real world output transformer unless you are getting one for like a 300B or a 2A3 at max like 3, 3K primary output transformer or less. That's when you can find uh, actual units that you can purchase which are in the uh, 30 Henry range for a 3K load. If you go to anything like a 5k load, 6k, 10k, then even the very expensive transformers are about one, 5 Henry per k, the one that, that he lists here. Uh, so even though you pay top money for most realistic output transformers, that, that 5 Henry per k will be a realistic uh, um, um, thing that, that you get for actual river <laughs> transformers going any higher you just need to probably have the unit custom made for you <laughs> uh, unless you just get uh, uh, transformers single ended transformers which are just super low uh, impedance for the primary maybe like a 1k primary for something like a 6 uh, C th 33C tube, you know, those Russian big MiG fighter jet tubes. Um, and now, some of the Lunda data sheets uh, state that optimal current for the ideal flux density, uh, if the current is far lower than recommended, then optimal flux would not be achieved. But base might be excellent, but I wonder what the sonic detriment is for not hitting optimal flux. I hope to experiment and find out. Do you have any insight? So my insight on that is that uh, uh, I have never thought about like uh, optimal optimal flux or or in 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 that that range. What does even optimal flux? mean because uh, what happens with the single ended output transformers is that the tube that is uh, ba basically we are hooking up the plate of the tube to the primary of the output transformer the primary coil and that is hooked to the high voltage supply the B plus supply from the power supply of the amplifier and uh, and when we turn it on, then the tube, as the heater warms up, it starts to conduct uh, a steady state current, a certain milliamps of current, continuously through that primary coil. And that prime continuous current draw will magnetize a significant part of the magnetizable domains, the magnetic domains of in, inside the laminations of the output transformer. And what that means that because those domains are magnetized, when there is a signal coming through the tube, which means the tube is conducting more current or less current, uh, then those domains are already magnetized, so they cannot contribute to being more magnetized or less magnetized because they are eating being the, the, the magnetic capacity is eaten up already so basically i'm not even sure that there's something as an optimal flux i would say that the le least amount of magnetic domains we magnetize uh, we have the bigger headroom for dynamics which includes 
not just base response but uh, high frequency as well low level signals especially and uh, and just like um, the amount of information delivery at every dynamic level is just vastly impacted by uh, by how much we are magnetizing up or available magnetic current it's like money in the bank like let's say uh, if you have like let's say like a 50 Henry uh, inductance well it, it's not, not 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 a good thing to say but let's say you have maybe like a, 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 a three kilograms worth of laminations in your output transformer let's say that's that's the weight of the laminations in a single ended transformer then in a typical single ended transformer most of that three kilograms is already magnetized so what is available for your signal might be less than half a kilogram worth of metal that will actually be part of uh, uh, being free to play your music for you rest of there is just to deal with the steady state current and, and that's why I said that the the less the the milliamps drawn through that the, the more amount uh, of magnetizable material available for you and 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 the gains for that is just absolutely tremendous however my insight on what might be the drawback to dropping the steady state current is, is, is not related to the output transformer but to the power tube because when you change how much current that the tube is drawing you are changing the parameters you're changing the behavior of the tube essentially it becomes a different power tube at a different current and and that's because when you change the the, the current or the voltage or both of a power tube uh, then you are also changing what type of load it wants to see so you are changing the load line of the of the amplifier and what is really important that 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 the, at the current that you are using you find an output transformer for that current so for example if you already have an amplifier where the vacuum tube was designed to be operating let's say at a 100 milliamp steady state current and it has a 5k load if you drop it down to let's say 50 milliamps of steady state current so you half it then it won't be optimal with that 5k load so you will need a different output transformer but of course you can put the same size output transformer same amount of magnetizable material but you will have much more headroom to deal with it now when you drop the current of a, of a, of a tube the steady state current what means that you are taking it out from class A operation and, and the, the higher the steady state current of a vacuum tube is, the deeper it gets into class A operation. So, as always, there are pros and cons. So, it's not just like, uh, I just, you know, have the current and life is sweet. I just have tons of headroom. No, it, it doesn't work like that. You have to take every uh, design parameter into account and you have to observe, you have to correctly match the output transformer and and part of that class a operation thing is that uh, uh, when you are in deeper class a you have much better mid-range uh, but you have less uh, less power output less less dynamic range uh, i mean like you can you hit clipping and compression faster so you have less headroom and that's why that can translate into less dynamic range uh, so there's lots of adjustments lots of things going on in when you design an amplifier so you cannot just uh, trade one thing for another it's always you have to balance things out so 
If you already have an amplifier, then just turning down the current, I would, I would really uh, advise it just to try it out and then see, because there is a very, very little chance that in your room, with your system, your equipment, uh, etc., etc., your, your speakers, probably that steady state current that the amplifier is running on might not be the optimal for you. So if there's like biasing option on the power amp, always try and, and try it out. And, and, and you can figure out what are the sonic changes of uh, how uh, much current we are running through the tube is just by set it to different bias when we are biasing a tube amplifier. And uh, however, before you go like crazy about it, always consult your manual and what the manufacturer recommends for biasing. And, and on, by my personal experience, I never recommend to, to bias it to run higher current than what the manufacturer says, because that will mean shortened tube life and less reliability and the tube is going to run hotter and going to stress out all the components inside the amplifier. And uh, some manufacturers really design their tube amps to be really rugged and you can crank up the bias, I mean crank up the current, and, and it's still fine. But there's a, a lot of manufacturers who really work on a really tight budget. And if you add on the on the milliamps, you will notice that uh, your tubes will be going poof, poof, burning out left and right. Probably uh, things inside your amp will give up their ghost as well in a very short notice. So, so don't. But also on a side note, if you if you can if you change the bias and you don't notice too much, then always keep the tubes uh, at as low current, running at as low current as possible because that's going to extend the tube life, the power tube life, quite a lot. And especially if the manufacturer is already running the tubes very hard and maybe giving you just a few thousand hours of tube life, which is a joke, it should never be that short. Uh, it should be like in the 10,000 hours range or tens of thousands of hours. That's what I like to design my amps for, so that you put in a pair of uh, power tubes and I use the amp every day for five, six hours. And, uh, and, and, and the first time I have to worry about the tubes is after 10 years, the power tubes. Yes, the power tubes. So, uh, and, and you can do that. Any designer can do that to, to design tubes, power tube operation with that kind of uh, longevity in mind. So I hope this little uh, mental experiment or <laughs> uh, thing about uh, transformers and power tube operation and biasing was uh, helpful for you. And as always, Transformer choices depend extremely, extremely heavily on how you are using your power tubes, how we are biasing the power tubes, and, and one cannot be separated from the other. And, and some things which might be a little bit better for one might be a lot worse for the other. So it, a compromise must be always made between these two. So have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you for this uh, collecting retro. Thank you for your comment on, uh, on this matter and uh, everyone have a wonderful day. Bye bye.